pedophilia. And uh, while that's going on, I'm going to read stuff that I was writing during it that have not necessarily anything to do with it. Kind of like an interior monologue. So it is about an hour. <clears throat> Lightning storms on a new moon knock everything loose. Yesterday my closet was full of uniforms for identities I thought I was supposed to wear. This morning all this stuff is a white shirt and a pair of white pants. I can do anything with that. I can take on any color or texture with that. My heart is humming and my eyes are inward and my head is a cafe full of travelers from all over the world, catching a moment between storms. The moon always feels new when it's new. This has all happened before, but never quite the same exactly. But the moon is restless, the night was tossing and turning, but the moon was lost in the sea and caught a glimpse of light, as if you could ever forget what light is like. But the moon is new and sees a hundred thousand stars. But the moon knows there is nothing, nothing, nothing like the sun. The dog is writing the novel of his life, and it looks like a novel to him, except that it is hard to read it as a novel if you are not the dog, because of how time works for the dog, because of the rule of seven, one year is seven and all that. And the first thing you need to know when reading the novel of the life of the dog is that the life of the dog is, like yours, much too short. And every dog is extremely aware of mortality, and this is one of the reasons why every dog looks at you like they can't believe they are going to lose you, and they can't believe how much they love you at the same time. You thought it was a lake, but it's obvious by now that you are in the ocean. The islands you have been moving across these past few years have all turned out to be unstable and are crumbling or crumbling and sinking. So you can't go back, and it's hard to see. The sun brings mirages, so you have to move at night, and the moon will never be bright enough to see more than a few feet ahead. You know what? A few feet ahead is just exactly just enough. You know that heart and raging bull when he starts doing stand-up and you kind of feel accidentally high because you feel like you're in another film suddenly, but then it goes on and you're all like, oh, okay, this is the same movie, okay, huh, let's see how this turns out. 2016 was like that. The dog is on the motorcycle. The dog on the motorcycle is barking at himself because dogs bark at motorcycles. He is advised again and again to get off the motorcycle, but that is missing the point. Because this is not a problem, this dog barking at himself. In fact, this is how most of us are. But we just pretend it's not how we live with ourselves. And this is precisely what makes him the dog on the motorcycle. I'm at a garage sale selling old and forgotten things. There's a box where I have all of my sweet conversations with past loves. And they are selling two for a dollar. Most people don't even look, but toward the end, a couple comes in, arguing. They want to buy everything for half of what we're asking. They say they are giving things away to charity, but I suspect they are just going to resell it all for three times as much. I'm not bargaining with them. They are irritating and don't need my encouragement. But this box, I sell them this box for three dollars. I don't need anything in it. I have all the sweetness in my head, and I could use three dollars. They buy it and act like they want to fight with me. As they leave, they try to return to their fight, but they can't. Sweet little sounds come out of their mouths. And as they drive away, they turn around to look at me, and I see myself in that car. I'm 16 and on a date with someone whose eyes are sparkling back at me. And the heat of the day is about to turn into a warm summer night, and all the world is a song. So the dog is like thinking about that Egyptian thing where your heart is put on a scale and the other side is a feather and they have to weigh the same, like your heart has to be light as a feather to get to mortality and the dog is like, okay, that is a cat-centric universe and in mine it's like this. Your heart is the scale and on one side is the place where you burst into laughter and on the other side is the place where you burst into tears and you have to balance them and it's easy to tell when they are out of balance because it's your heart the things that, that know is more than you think you do. And this was the morning I handed back the headphones for the audio guide of the art installation that was my life. I wanted to see this next part without narration. The simultaneous translations and descriptions were convenient, but I found the translations to be highly inaccurate, and the descriptions always looked like me. I wanted to know what it might be like to live in a moment without pretending to understand. I'm in a strange city, one that's between wars, walking through crowds on a hot day toward a fountain. This fountain is on a street that has an ancestor's name on it. And sitting at the fountain, where I was hoping to sit, is me. There's this version of me, and I can't be sure, but he looks a little unhinged. He looks 
like he's thinking about some lost love, or like he's grieving something, or maybe just awake to knowing all of this is love. Something like that. Anyway, I'm walking toward him about to say, this is going to be all right. But before I open my mouth, he looks up at me and smiles and says, this is going to be all right. Ghost warriors wandering, looking for a trace of recognition. Ghosts want to see their reflections in the water in our eyes. Ghosts want to see that the marks on their bodies left marks on the earth in our breath like a stutter in time. I know more about cool water than hot metal. I'm one of the lucky ones. And I know there's lots of different kinds of wars. And I pray that the war in your head is over and you find your way home. They say, before we disappear, we want to know that you know this happened to us. So many of us never find our way back home. When the light changed and the sun became impossibly bright to announce the next birth of blazing heat and the room filled with narrating birds, I understood that the split between the body and the mind had been greatly exaggerated. I don't know if this is the end of the second act or the beginning of the third. I hope there are at least five. I hope this is ridiculously long. But I know this is not the play I signed on for. And my part keeps changing. To be honest, there are more than a few days when I'm sure I will be fired for missing cues and forgetting my motivation and not understanding contexts and for failing to be believable in so many scenes. But, but, we get to make this up as we go along and that's the most exciting thing in the world. My heart is broken and sewn back together 14 times just enough to make it strong enough that I can hear my father's ghost when it comes from out of the shadows. He smells like olives and motor oil, wet earth and sweet grass. He says his hand is on my heart when I can't fall asleep. He says the dead make sparks, but it's up to the living to keep the light alive. He says I need to keep moving to live by the sea. He says that when we are living, we have to refuse to be ghosts in the presence of the ones we love. He says we write enlightening on each other's hearts, that the breaks are not wounds, but stories of the beautiful storms that come around again and again, that we are the beautiful and the dangerous storms. It's 2.30 in the morning and all the romantics are smoking in my room. Rimbo Rambeau is talking about the hundred loves that crucified him. Byron is falling and bleeding on the thorns of life. And Dylan is stuck somewhere on Desolation Road, looking at the Cohen and the Tower of Song. And I can't hear my own heart breathe and I forget to breathe. And I finally tell them, I think I have to let you out the window. You're so tragic. You can't narrate me anymore. You don't know the real story of my heart. The story of my heart is narrated by a dog in a penguin suit at a high-fashion cocktail party. Just now figuring out that this is not a costume party at all, and no dogs are allowed. The story of my heart is sung by the broken-winged bird that lives in my throat, singing a most beautiful song, a song that's always on the verge of being forgotten. The story of my heart is a diamond under my tongue. You'll never know the beauty that I know. When I was younger, my mouth was full of coal. Then you're at the sea and you're thinking, good God, what a mess, everything is really, what the hell happened back there? And you're sure this is all making you crazy, and the sea is pulling up everything that looks like you, like, just like you imagined. And you're thinking that maybe this is it. You turn the corner here, and this is it. From now on, you're going to act as lost as you feel, and the thread keeping you from falling apart is snapped, and you hear a snap even, but it's not what you thought. You were just reset. There is no mess. Maybe messy like biology is messy, and there's nothing to explain to anyone, and no one owes you an explanation, and everything you wanted is here, but you don't want anything more than this. You've been here before. You've never been here before. It's a repetition of something utterly new, just like before this, except this is the first time down, and your thoughts are your own. No one knows you, and no one is less mysterious than you. When we started talking to that spark in each other, instead of being that needy, greedy thing in each other, we started to act like those rare old gods who already know lost grief and magic. When I was younger, I read books and saw movies and listened to stories about how to get past sea monsters. When I got older, I discovered that I really like sea monsters. He was always fidgeting when he was younger, always wanting to make things happen. He'd never sleep whenever there were adults talking in the house in case he might miss something. He always lost if I didn't sleep. He could hide well, but he couldn't stay there. He knew how to make magical things happen to into the forest, but he could never stay there long enough to see how things unfolded. When he was older, and the sorcerer agreed to take him on, he thought he would be learning the things they do with powders and candles. So it came as a surprise when he found himself learning how to sit still. 
The angel of history covered in new wounds holds us in a steady gaze and says, these wounds are your wounds. Listen to the ghosts of your restless past. Listen to the ones who are in the crosshairs. Consider this a formal invitation to be part of the tide that turns. For the first 30 million years, the chameleon was reflecting everything, the balance and the imbalance, and noticed that, every, that reflecting imbalance was very hard on the chameleon. So the next 30 million, the chameleon was careful about the company it kept, so it would only reflect the comfortable things, and being always so balanced, felt absolutely imbalanced. So for these past 30 million years, the chameleon sees the best in everything and everyone and reflects that, and the chameleon is so happy about what it gets to be. We say, you are so beautiful, and the chameleon says, that's you, dear, I'm just reflecting you. But that was the day when I saw the role I was expected to play, and my heart was broken. I wished I could lay down on the spot and never get back up. And I laid down, and the next day I saw that I had been brought back from the dead, and everything was the same except my heart had been embalmed. Yesterday, it was full of twist ties, is what they say, and you are, they are so useful, so tangly and clingy, but they poke through eventually, and they are eventually dangerous, and they refilled my heart with feathers. And you can see how metaphorically I like that. But they said, these feathers are kind of light, but they're also kind of witchy, and this is what we want you to bring to your part for this next scene. So this is where I am today, before the sun even peeks over the mountain even. I am not as tired as I think I am. My dead self falls away like old skin, and my young self is next to me in bed. It's 2 a.m., and he is sitting up and smiling at the moonlight coming through the window. And he says, for the next scene, I want us to remember the secrets of enchantment. The moon is a fingernail, and the bird in our heart is a witch, and the dead right on us. And if we just sit still and stay light, the blackbird goddess will paint us with butter. And we slip through all the cracks, and we leave delicious traces on the ones we love. And we are at our most powerful when we are melting. The dog, having seen everything at once in a flash, tries to bark it out. The dog is trying to say, this, 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 all of this is love. Because the dog knows that once you know something, you have to bark it, even or especially if no one believes you. And the dog barks in a rough bark, and it comes out too loud, or too anxious, or too fast, and for far too long. But this is as close as the dog will ever get to being a poet, and that's close enough. Uh, message, text message from Shakespeare to Marlowe. Is it sweating balls or tripping balls? <laughs> Can it be both? I'm writing a love poem. Bill. The dog who knows this is a love story is looking through the window or a computer screen or through eyes. It doesn't matter which. They all have their own distortions. And the dog sees fear everywhere, and this makes sense. I would like to say something simple, like love is motion, and fear is what happens when there is no motion. But it is not so simple. However, dog goes on because the dog is on a roll. I'm going to pretend it's as simple as that. The dog, like you, is madly in love with the world. And the dog, like you, has a heart that's strong enough to remember everything and love anyway. Then the dog finds his dog Guru, a Pomeranian, from Pomerania, on top of Dog Mountain on the hottest day. And the dog says, I have reached enlightenment. I have broken all the spells and enchantments, and now I see things as they are. And the dog Guru says, Oh, no, that's stupid. Why would you do that? And the dog says, because I do not want to be like other dogs, digging obsessively and barking at the world. And the dog guru says, oh, dog, you have to bark and you have to dig. You have to get enchanted and stay enchanted. The dogs who dig, those are the ones who find things. I woke up with the moon kissing my belly, pouring honey in my ear, and decorating my heart with electric dragonflies. I am going to decolonize you, she said. She can be he, but not for me. Today, you are in an open relationship with your gods. Today, dogs are prophets. And when they see you after you've been gone a long time, this is how God feels about you. Open your mouth to this world. It's your lover. Your finesse in crossing realities will bring the old knowledge that fear makes us all stupid and mean, but that love is bigger than fear. And so, don't trust the heartfelt, warning, scaredy cat words that surround us, but keep an eye peeled for the crickets and lizards and ladybugs that glow in the dark, the raw sensuality of revolution, and the politics of lust that say we are all in this together. Born with a generous capacity for surprise, when his friends told him about new ideas, or he tried new foods, or he fell in love, his eyes got a tiny bit bigger, so that the older he got, the more he looked like a young child who felt raindrops for the very first time.
The dog on the motorcycle through the mountains is hit in the face with hard pebbles. Every other breath is hit with pebbles, and that makes sense. It's worth it, my dog. The roofs are lifted, and the hearts of loved ones are open, and raindrops sizzle when they hit, and after another ten breaths, every heart is cooler. Make them cooler. Make them glow. The dog prays. Make them glow with a milky blue like my watery longing. In the morning, the dog wakes up in a mountain of M&Ms. It came down hard last night, and the world is sweet, but it also cracks your teeth. No one said love was easy. Outside is wet sage, and inside is burning sage, and three more breaths, and three more breaths. The dog remembers sweetness has secrets that have nothing to do with money, but everything to do with following the breath until this dog is the rhythm of the world. It's in love, and the dog says thank you, and the dog says I wish, I wish, I wish we were here. I, I like drinking cantaloupe juice right before I take a nap, because when I wake up, I burp a little bit, and it's like, oh wow, cantaloupe party in my mouth. At the beginning of the loneliest year of my life, a child of the sea came to the foot of my bed and told me to follow her. Every night, every night I submerged, and when I came up, when I came back up, there was a story written on my sheet with salt. Every morning I hung the sheet from the trees to dry. By the time the year was half over, my house and yard were full of sheets enough to make a novel. I am hard to live with. I don't trust anyone who doesn't come from the water in love with something hardly anyone else can see. The stories I live in look like they come from me, but I swear they are written with water on water, and I've barely begun to tap the source. You're in midair, and you come across an older version of you. He or she is going in the other direction, and he or she looks so sad and broken. And you grab him on your shoulders, and you want to shake some sense into him, but you know how you get, so you just turn him around. You're not going to find what you're looking for back there. You know because you just came from there. It's all in this direction. It all starts right here. Do you know how lucky you are to be here? Do you know how lucky you are to be looking? You are a child and you can't even talk much yet. You are caught inside a detail. It's something like the colors of the clown on your blanket. Yellow and red and blue. And there is something so mysterious about it, and you don't know if it's the adults either. You don't know if the adults either don't know about this or have lost the ability to get lost because they think they don't have time, because they should be with you, staring at these colors because everything is here. You are young and somewhere familiar with friends, and you are grateful you don't have to drive because you can't even walk, and you can't really talk, and you are caught in this detail, something about the painted tile on the floor and the way the designs are slightly off, and you can see the hand of the one who painted this, and you don't know why you haven't noticed this before, maybe you were asleep all this time, but not now. Everything is here right now, and you are so far from asleep, and you don't know why everyone you know isn't here, right here, looking with you, and you notice details, you feel awake, and you think that's the only time you are awake, and you are right. You are not that young, and you can talk, but there is a woman in front of you, and an hour ago she was a man, and she is wearing gold cloth, and she is speaking a language that you haven't quite learned yet, and you understand that a blanket catches a clown, and a tile catches a pattern, and a body catches a goddess, except it's likely that it's the other way around, that the pattern is an energy looking for something to inhabit. We are energy is disguised as matter, looking for patterns, and patterns are energy looking for matter, and here we are. I want to get a job working in security at nightclubs. I stand there and say things like, oh, you're here. Those people were just talking about you. And do you think God actually listens? And are you coming in here wearing that? I understood that I was made of light, but so was everyone I knew. What I didn't understand was why my skin was already cracking. The last layer came in late, and the next one wasn't due until October. That time of magic, the last one was bitter, well understood and reasonable. But it just didn't last. The next layer was already poking through leopard patterns and a sweet smell that reminded me of the pockets of a lost coat. This is a time of unimaginable beauty, it was explained to me. This time doesn't need you, but it would be easier for you if you noticed how the beautiful and sweet things are starting to make their way into the world. You have to listen past the angry yelling. You have to go past the scared men in front of you. And you have to teach your heart to leap over the weight of old and useless skin. I am looking forward to getting older, especially to that part when my constant bewilderment stops being irritating and becomes endearing.
Before we are born, we get two choices. Love will, will make us float, and grief will make us sink. Or love will ground us, and grief will make us unbearably light. Feathers and stones, they do different things to us. Some of us are so light we float to heaven way sooner than ever anyone thought we would. And some of us are so heavy, the dead or the sea embrace us, and they say they're there and pull us under while we're still so young. The ones who are still here, if we are lucky, we forget which choice we made and look our gods in the eye and ask for nothing but balance. You, who worry so much about whether or not language and ghosts live in the dirt, afraid to rinse off the layers of geography in case the ancestors might be washed away, you don't know how the dust of marrow of those ones finds its home in the marrow of you. You confuse the whispers in Polish and German with the song of birds, and that's only natural, and in fact it's accurate. And you are almost afraid to remember the way the strings of the heart act more like roots. And when you stop to breathe, you hear something in Polish, something like the purring of a dragon that got tamed, something like the whispers of the ones you love, some secret knowledge that gets passed from branch to branch, root to root, ghost to ghost. At the cafe on the edge of the world, there are birds who build their nests with the threads of our conversations. The nests are made of suffering and love, details about kitchen renovations, discussions of privilege and revolution, alchemical secrets for turning oneself into a salamander, and funny stories about dogs. We think we are speaking because we are right, but the birds know that the only important thing is that we keep talking. Three years since you left the body behind. It's 3 a.m., and when I put my hands on my face, I can feel the heartbeat of the earth through my fingers. Your hands are in my hands. Your pulse is in my pulse. We are the heartbeat of the earth, looking for a feather of proof. We want ghosts to give us things. That's the trouble with translation. We forget how to read the signs. Ghosts write through us and fly right through us. Your hand on my back. I'm a little kid learning how to ride a bike. Your hand on my back. And I blink. And my hand is on my daughter's back. And when she learns to balance the bike, she moves forward and she looks like she is flying. And when she turns around, she can't believe I'm so far away. I'm not right there. And she says, I felt your hand on my back the whole time. I don't know how this works, but sometimes this bright sun opens something. And I see something. And it seems true. And I can't keep looking because I'm afraid my heart will beat right out of my chest. So I'm starting to do more work as an artist model again, and it's really meditative. If anyone else here has done this, I wonder, what do you do to avoid getting, you know, excited? I think about German food. <laughs> your mind is a pack of wild dogs, and your heart is a wolf, one that looks at you with a fierce and ancient love, who keeps looking at you after the others have barked themselves to sleep. A prescription for artists feeling lost in a cultural desert. That's Phoenix, that's not here. <laughs> Number one, pretend that you are on an extended artist's residency. <laughs> Number two, look for themes and connections. They're there. Number three, talk to your artist friends about the themes and connections. This will lead to countless new themes and connections. Number four, come to realize that there are more interesting people doing interesting things here than there were ten years ago. Ten years ago, there were a lot. Number five, decide that we need each other. Absolute. Number six, make that thing that no one else could imagine but you. You know what I'm talking about. I mean that thing. And number seven, keep moving into deeper water. That's where the sea monsters are. I dream that I move to that same European city I always dream about, and I find out that the people there have this thing where when they love each other, their hearts explode and glitter and confetti come flying out. And when they hurt each other or make each other sad or angry, their hearts explode and glitter and confetti come flying out. Of course, for the one whose heart is exploding, the details matter very much, very much, but not to the culture at large. The culture at large just cares if you are living in a way so that you are covered, just covered, in glitter and confetti. I started to get comfortable making people uncomfortable, and so I had to go back, back to the roots, where I could see the place where the trunk went into the earth, and back to the roots, I remembered the thing in me that made my heart flutter to make things that are like the red handprint on the wall of the cave or the temple of the, or the cafe, the red handprint that says someone else was here. They had five fingers just like you. 
On the day my heart opened, the first thing I saw was a row of wailing women grieving like banshees, and the next ones, the next I saw, the ones with mops and brooms sent to clean up the water and the dust. And the third thing I saw was a row of women with history written on their skin, and they could not speak. And then there were children who never got to learn their destinies, and then there were waves and waves of people of all ages. And finally, my very first great, great granddaughter was there, and she had lightning in her eyes, and she was made of water, and she told me that we are born into fire and water, and the secret written on all of our bones is one of a hundred thousand words per long. Every time I come back from the forest, I know another secret about the city, like every corner of the world is part of the lover's body. I'm one of the rootless ones, born of the lust to wander, and the rootless ones know why falling in love is the same as traveling. And it is unbearably light because we've learned it is temporary. The best trips and the loves that know our secrets, they go by so fast. We lost the plot when we turned love from the thing that defined us into the thing that we were missing. Eventually someone would come along and figure out how to bottle and sell the promise of the thing that we lacked. We are easy to convince we don't have the thing that breathes through us every moment we are here. But disillusionment, disillusionment comes as a strange blessing. The raven on your doorstep with a rose in its beak. You see it and just know you're going to have to reconsider. And once you add a touch of forgiveness to anything, you'll start to smell cinnamon. And you might smell of cinnamon. That's when we are let in on a secret. It's obvious, but then again, this is far from paradise. Erasing the line between us and them, inside out, isn't blank love, it is love. I feel like I must be running late, this is much too late, and that's a relief, the pressure is off, but I'm still running because the effort itself is holy, and there I am in that same dream, I am in a hostel in Europe, and I see people I used to know, but it's been a very long while, it's tasting like the moon after you forget you even know what it tastes like. All night long the moon is peeking around the corner at me, and she even wakes me up at odd hours, one, three, and five, haha, -ha, and she says, oh, you are still sleeping, and in the morning she's watching from the west, and then she's behind a tree, and then she is an orange cat in the backyard. She does not always look like a moon, and she says, I love to watch you sleep, and I love to watch you wake up. I know how she feels, but I'm running late, and everything and everyone I love is so far away, and I can't tell you how perfect this is. I look at the sky, and now it's just the locust of a skeleton of a moon, it's just a placeholder, but I can feel her breath on the back of my left ear, and I feel like when lovers are having breakfast and remembering what they did at 1, 3, 5 in the morning. And then my heart turned to face me, and it looked like the daughter in some science fiction movie about the future. One who refuses to be so light that she can just float away, but never be so heavy that she can't disappear at a moment's notice. She's got her father's picture in a locket around her neck, and she says, yes, we forgive the fathers, but we don't do things that way anymore. Yet, and it feels like there's another head inside my head wanting to crack open and it's and start grieving wanting to grow enough to crack through this eggshell surface I'm like a snake when it starts to look for a rock because everything is about to change fall is painting itself inside everything from the inside out and I don't want to wake up yet this is a fall like everything is falling this is fall but there's something else we would have to find each other all over again in different clothes meet each other while speaking a different language We'd have to learn how to speak to the goddess who knows about shedding skin. We always think we'll do anything to keep our children safe. We understand that we all want to keep our children safe. We are terrified to wake up and understand what so many others already know, that the children are not safe. Then the moon rises over my left shoulder, and I'm thinking, oh, we have that, that moon. It's ours. It belongs to us, the ones guided by love. You can recognize us by our scratches. We're so obsessed that we find ourselves hard to live with sometimes. You can tell by the lines around our eyes. Who have an entirely reasonable fear of Nazis and slaveholders and pilgrims and another Holocaust. You can tell by the way our fingertips pulse with the memories of the previous generations. Who remember that even this heaviness and this longing are made of star stuff. When the weather finally broke, it snapped in half. I was a pine tree stuck by lightning, dripping sap on the world. My heart twisted in trying desperately to exhale, but it was never empty enough. There are hawks flying all around us. They know how and when we feel. They used to be rooted just like us, and now there is absolutely no distance between us. 
I am trembling made of feathers and sap. Last year you wrote on me with lipstick. You, this year, you write hieroglyphs on my ribs. Next year you will write me in smoke. And we will make a nest of our twisted hearts. Mentirosa, revoltosa, happy fall, sat numb. This year we are beautiful losers. Come December we could be heroes. I'll meet you in Berlin under the bridge where we wondered how it would be to live through a break in the weather strong enough to take down a wall. My daughter is laughing in the car on the way to school because the radio is playing old songs. We wonder what's happening, where even the new songs are a few months old, and for a moment it is like time has stuttered and turned backwards. My heart skips because this is what I want to happen. I don't want time to stop and turn backwards. It's moving too fast. That feeling when the train has left the station. I think it's just me, but she knows about this too. She has the same tremble too. At traffic lights, we see emaciated angels out of the corners of our eyes. We hope they are able to turn back to Earth just a bit. Or stop time from running forward like a freight train. Or slow it down just a little. That feeling in the pit of the stomach, that feeling is there almost all the time now. And we wonder if we are becoming like them, emaciated angels. And this is what it feels like to be an emaciated angel, being blown backwards, all of us being blown backwards in the future. Like an Odysseus who learns that Penelope met someone else and she likes him better, less dramatic. There's no need to talk, there, so there's no need to go back home. A couple like Ariadne and Dionysus who stop taking intoxicants and sell their sacred caves to buy a condo in the middle of the city. Or a Persephone who decides she doesn't miss the springtime and likes living in the, in the underworld alone. We found ourselves living outside of our texts, and some days were difficult, and some days were tragic. And some days were 24 hours long. We learned to live with the constant craving of a destiny averted and the weight of living in a story where we didn't know the middle. And then they saw that the road was a long tongue. It would either eat them alive or tell them a beautiful story about themselves, or maybe both. But for a good story, it was worth it. Do list for today. Meditate on the I am. Eat blueberries. Keep an eye peeled for Nazis. Like yesterday, release a gasp of relief over the love I have for the company I keep. Allow for the capacity of surprise. Now. The dog looks at the moon in the shadowy wisp of a warning moon and says, I love the song you are singing to me today. And this makes the moon cry because she's always singing to the dog. She sang him into being and she sings to him while he breathes in his dog body. And she will sing him, sing to him when he stops breathing. And she knows it's hard for him to hear what is always there. Um, things I dream about when I have a cold. <laughs> when I wake up, I am irritated with Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> Not because of the heteronormative acceptance speech, but because I have been dreaming that he has been telling me secret Buddhist breathing techniques all night. <laughs> he says things like, there's only here and now, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> And you and me, we gotta keep on being the same stars that the stars come from, you know what I mean? Fact. And when he says that we are all one, I drag myself from the bed, but I understand that no matter how far I run, I cannot, no, I cannot escape the truth. <laughs> A car conversation with Ellie. Me. Do you know what mansplaining is? Ellie. I feel like you're about to do it. <laughs> I come, out of the li I come out to the living room and I see that 2016 is a drunk monkey. We suspected as much. The drunk monkey has destroyed everything in my house. Okay, I say, enough out of you, 2016. You are done. Now go lie down. The monkey looks at me and starts to cry. And he doesn't stop crying. Against my better judgment, I hold him to my chest and he sobs until my clothes are soaking. I don't think I can handle this, but obviously the monkey can't either. And I don't think anyone can handle this. And when I hear the monkey's tired breathing, it is somehow the most hopeful sound I've ever heard. I'm coming up to the point where the road of the year is ending, party over, oops, out of time. And I see that I am at the edge of a cliff and I am traveling with nothing but, <clears throat> excuse me, Nothing but a bag of magic things. Faith, I gotta have faith, and the dog. The dog is baying at my heels. I recognize the situation, and I would be a fool not to recognize that love doesn't always win. 
and that, in fact, it seems to lose most of the time. It would be foolish to have hope after all of this. However, the role of the fool is the role I am handed, and this is the way it begins, full of hope and falling off the edge of the world into a new year, falling a thousand kisses deep. This is where the story goes. It's a love story, remember. And sure, we could be heroes, but we are not the heroes. Love is. There are some souls who, before they get born, have glitter painted on the inside of their bones, and they see and feel things in a different way, the what is through the what could be. I wake up with glitter on my cheek, and the world is dusted, and I can't see the forms for the sparkles. And this is how I remember what heaven is like. I remember heaven is on earth. Out of the shadows comes a white wolf who says the hello that begins the year, and then I fall into a dream that lasts for 18 hours, but I can see your face after a hundred years, and you would still melt me like a snow. Somewhere between childhood and last week I see us. We are in the dark and watching a movie about vampires. The one where we see ourselves as we want to be seen. This is the year when we get to stop pretending to be our opposites. This is the year when we get to turn into the sheet music upon which time plays. When we replace all the baseball caps with hats made out of ice cream. We lose our respect for gravity. It is too easily tired. Whereas magnetism does not sleep. Let's fall out of love with the Navy and back in love at the bottom of the sea. Keep your lips loose. Tell me the story of how you got here, and meet me at the Turkish market by the canal when it starts to get lighter. In the meantime, I keep my heart light by pinching myself whenever I remember this is a dream, but always keeping cinnamon in the house always, and by keeping the faith that despite the years of feeling lost at sea, I never lost the thread. Your heart jumped once. You were 17, and the eyes matched, matched the jacket, and your heart jumped, and you recognized that everything was connected and complicated. You wanted and you didn't stop wanting, and your heart didn't stop jumping. You're still here. You recognize that it's even more connected and more complicated, and your instructions are simple. You are instructed to recognize. Recognize that this in front of you is beautiful. Recognize that this behind you is beautiful. Recognize that your mouth is filling with fireflies, and your beating heart is being played like the drums of God. Then she said, my heart is like the Grand Canyon. It's complex and beautiful in spots, but it's also a terrible mess, and no one should ever go down there without a guide. And he said, if there's anything else that's worth doing, I can't remember what it is. Do you remember that time you were hoping for something to distract you or something to grab your attention, and you were missing someone or grieving someone, and you were too deep in it to notice that this was sprinkled with lavender, bergamot, jasmine, and clove? And when you slept, hummingbirds were playing with your ribs and collarbone, pouring everything over, pouring lavender, bergamot, jasmine, and clove into your bloodstream. And on gray days, you were too dim to smell, but you felt like your hands on the nape of your neck and your belly were charged, all pins and needles charged and scented with lavender, bergamot, jasmine, and clove. Not just a distraction, but the distraction that would become the mark of an enchanted time. Uh, because we're haunted or haunting if we're lucky both at once, we don't get to choose the ghosts that will come in. But we can decide to leave the window open. I always had a thing for wolves. They could move through bed sheets and window screens in my dreams. And I always thought they were tormenting me. I didn't know they were teaching me. I wanted to be a specter, but I didn't know if I could do it when I was still alive. The wolves gave me permission. The best thing anyone gave me, ever, was permission. There are three wolves in my house. Their names are Rebellion, and Resistance, and Escape. Flying on the wing of a Dada bird, we are crashing into the cliffs because our marks look like designs on cheesecake from Long Island. When I lick my wrist, I taste salt, and maybe that's why the dog likes to sleep with her face on my wrist. She is one of the saltier dogs. Meanwhile, I try not to breathe deeply because panic is a button, and I like to wear buttons when our breath, empirically provable, is being held for further evaluation. If I fall back to earth into my heartbeat, I worry that I will fall so hard it will be like falling in love. And the last time this was a love story, my feet grew so long in the sand that I thought I was planted, and the sun kissed me over and over and would not let me sleep because she said I tasted like a salty flower. Gravity is a lost love, though, and I cannot say no. And if the choice is between the national music to commemorate the best wars and the chest beating of self-righteous indignation, I will instead turn my ear to the music of the last life around, when you said or I said, I can't remember who is who, I always sound like you in my dreams. When you said or I said, listen to this, listen to my wrist, listen to the music when you lick my wrist. Do you hear it? The drum beat and the violins singing about us? Do you hear the drums that beat in our very blood?
The wind blows through. The wind blows your heart clean through. And you need a clean heart. That angry one, that anxious one, wasn't good for anyone. The wind blows your head all clear like a prism that can spot a rainbow when it sees one, like spotting an old friend in a room full of ghosts. The wind comes to blow your mouth wide open so you can taste this light, so you can untie your tongue and say all the things you never said. The wind is resistance coming to take you along. You're not waiting. You are the resistance, and long live the resistance. Uh, eight years ago, I was robbed at rifle point, and that was less stressful than reading the news today. <laughs> <laughs> you know why your heart gets tight when you see die high Nazi boots, despite the sultry homoerotics of Hugo Boss's design. <laughs> and you still might own a pair of rose colored John Lennon glasses. The state approved supermodels have all gone in for the evening, and we are all in the streets because we could be caught without our marching orders. We have the Constitution and an ACLU lawyer's number on our inside pockets. The old wolves are dying prepared to take us with them, but we haven't even begun to explore typography's relationship to this revolution. There is no, there is no time, and no such thing as time, and it is getting late earlier and earlier these days, like the yogis say. And despite time, here we are. We got tired and twitchy. We wanted to go to the Caribbean to have a cigarette with the president we loved, and then the year began, and we were done with love, but apparently love was not done with us. So despite our predictions for the end of the world, the rain was falling and spring would be coming anyway. With it comes the knowledge that the number of things we can be wrong about are unlimited. <laughs> we are like the cat who hates looking clumsy, the bird who can't be quiet, the dog who loves too much. We are a hot mess, but our imperfections, not our brightest ideas, will save us. When we said goodbye, when the train was coming, it was in another country, and I didn't know the language and couldn't tell, we couldn't tell if it was the end of the last world or the beginning of the next one. I still get restless when I hear trains. I can't tell if I'm carrying your ghost in my pocket or if it's a longing for future reference when we're celebrating the birth of a country that doesn't exist yet. I keep hearing trains, and when I fall asleep, I hear lovers whispering their goodbyes. Any variation of your name turns me to warm liquid. This is the part where we slip in and out of each other's movies, like we were made of butter, and we don't know the singer from the song. <coughs> because we knew that paradise was not for the likes of us, we constructed our own version, and we knew it was a cheap copy, always on the verge of crumbling apart, and because it was fragile, and it had our fingerprints all over it, we fell in love with it every day, over and over again, and our falling was an act of grace that turned us into angels. Before you are born, you get to make a choice. The first choice is that when you are having a last kiss with someone, not just anyone, but someone you will miss for a very long lifetime, an angel appears to tell you to remember this kiss because this kiss is the last one. In the other choice, on your way out of the world, there is a room you can visit where you get to live through all of the last kisses that you always wish you could remember better. You can stay as long as you like, but those who stay forever are mad. There is a third choice, and it's so hidden that almost no one can remember it, and hardly anyone can do it where you are born with the capacity to fall in love with the moment so hard that you never leave it. But for this, your heart is like rice paper, and your life is as short as a dream. So my guru was living on the moon for a residency, and at the end of the residency, <laughs> my guru told me about a trick with your hands where you hold your impulses in your hands for a long time until something happens, and what happens is never what you expect. And because I trust my guru and the moon, same thing, I tried it. I held my impulses in check until they were clear and I was still for 17 hours. Finally, when I was sure, not just clear, but sure, I wrapped the world in a blanket and called it the moon. And I told the world, moon, all the things that I could not say before. And it was true. And I was laid bare. I was not just laid bare, but laid clearly bare, with bare, with all the love, with all that I loved wrapped in a blanket in my hands. And on my lips was a prayer to have another day in which I could love the moon world. Now my lips are salty and I cannot sleep at all. I have no desire for it, no desire for anything really, except the very thing that I'm doing, which is trying to hold something too large for my hands. And love is nothing if not us trying to hold something too large for our hands. There's a version of you from seven years ago. They are looking at you and taking their cues from you, and they admire you more than you can even realize. But you, you keep thinking you should be further along by now, not so tangled up about love, with more money than you need, and driving your favorite color car, and eating with those forks you saw in a catalog, and thinking less about how this must look to anyone looking. 
but you can't see what they see. That version of you loves that you never sold your soul or lost a thread, even though you're sure you lost it. That because sunrises make you cry, and the ocean makes you swoon, and dogs make your heart crumble, and there are some people you just can't say no to, that you have won all of the games worth winning so far. So you literally owe it to yourself that one wants to grow up and be you, and you're the only one who knows the way. So we can keep arguing of the, about the best time to eat a banana, or we can dance in front of the Capitol dressed like dinosaurs. The rocks in our shoes make us do remarkable things. I wake up with my old skin at the foot of the bed, and you're still written on me. We learn how to carry the things we can't shed, as light as a peacock feather, and as heavy as a stone dragon guarding the castle of a city we could no longer believe in. This is not the first revolution. I'm lucky, but I'm Cassandra. I can talk about miracles that no one would ever believe. Believe it or not, I try to keep my lips sealed. I fall asleep whispering I am, and I wake up keen like a banshee. This is the time to throw away all of the broken things, not including me. You would think I would be too old to be a hot mess, but the writing on my skin keeps me up at night, and we are miracles, and this is a miracle. I want to remember that. Throw it into the hole of a new moon along with corn toasted in palm oil, and some of the secrets that only freckles can tell, because who I am becoming next is no longer any of my business. If I remember correctly, apparently I did ask to be born. Apparently I asked to fall in love with amazing people with amazing lives, and we would almost always lose track of each other. We would always say we'd find each other again, but we rarely would. But sometimes we would, and usually there wouldn't be a spark anymore, but sometimes there would. Apparently I asked to be surrounded by friends who I wouldn't always appreciate, but when I did I would know that they were gracious and talented and awakening and could teach me how to be like that if I just let it happen. Apparently, I asked for a strange heart, sometimes a war machine, and sometimes a cranky dog coming out of anesthetic, and sometimes open enough that it could tell me what it was for, how its madness and mirrors worked, and why, when that heart breaks, that doesn't mean it's broken, but that it's working. Apparently, I asked to live according to a hundred false narratives, because there would be freedom every time I let one of them go, and another veil would get lifted. If I remember correctly, I can't remember past today, and I asked that I couldn't remember past today, because in the next 24 hours, there are great secrets to be revealed. After the new moon wakes up, the dog is talking to this new moon and making the wish on this new moon, and the dog says, I don't want to do anything stupid anymore, is what the dog says. And the moon blinks like she does, and then she says, how about just one more thing, is what the moon says. And the dog says, yeah, 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 okay, is what the dog says. idea for a summer job uh, to be the guy with the beard who encourages people to clap rhythmically at folk concerts. <laughs> she asked why I was smiling. It was a good question. I wanted to make sure I had a good answer. I looked down for a long time thinking about it, and I had all sorts of complex reasons. When I looked up, her mouth was covered with flowers. This wasn't so complex. Because it's spring, I said. I'm at that restaurant where we all fall in love. It's right by the ocean. I'm waiting on a beach out front. I got here early because I like to look at the photos. There's a section of photos on the wall from all the times I've been here before. In some photos, I look so young, and in most of them, I think I look too worried. I don't look like I'm really there. But I didn't come here to look at me. I came to see her, to see her face in the old photos. I'm remembering a lot lately, and remembering that I never paid enough attention the first time around. I was always trying to figure out how to make her want to be with me, or wondering why I wasn't more famous, or trying not to think about things I thought I was supposed to do later. I came here to look at the photos, and look in her eyes in the photos to see what I missed. But the pictures are faded. I can't see her in any of them. She's just a blur of light in all of them. Lost in the photos, I don't see her when she comes in, and when she comes up behind me and says hello, I turn around to see her, and my heart is beating as loud as the ocean. and there's a blonde dog in the back of the car with the windows open. She's got her head out looking down at another dog, and her tail is wagging. This is how I feel right now. The windows between worlds are open, and who's a spirit, and who's a body, and who's in disguise, it doesn't matter, because it's so nice to see you. On some days, I want to lick the moon, because it's cheese, obviously. And I'm worried that I won't want to stop, and I will wear it down, and the next generation will have less of a moon to lick and look at. But when I say it out loud, like, moon, this is what I want to do to you, the moon always answers, and the moon always says, You can't wear me down. Just try. Just you try.
Walking out of the driveway, I see a woman in an orange tank top and black leggings. She's pregnant and she's smiling at me. I don't know why, but I understand that this is lucky. We are walking in the same direction and she's ahead of me. When I turn the corner, she goes straight, except I see another pregnant woman in an orange tank top and black leggings in front of me. So it's one of those kinds of days. The planets are spinning in different directions. Our heads are more open to our hearts, or the reverse, or both. And we can be two versions of ourselves if we tend toward that kind of thing. In another month or so, I will be driving a different kind of vehicle, and for someone who likes to think these things don't matter, I think about this a lot. So it's not surprising that when that vehicle comes around the corner and a future version of me is driving, I recognize it, but he doesn't recognize me. He looks calm, maybe even happy. I want to ask him if he'll, if he'll miss where I am, suspended in midair, waiting for the next trapeze guard to appear. I wonder why we don't believe this is as enchanting as we suspect it is. So riding a motorcycle full-time again means that I always look like I'm on my way to a Bruce Springsteen concert. <laughs> After all those years on the ocean floor, I still find sea monsters more fascinating than anything else in the world. I'm on the freeway on my bike with my mat strapped around my back. It's sore, a dull stomach game, three on a scale of one to ten, huh? Uh, from riding and grading and riding my motorcycle on the freeway. Duh. Uh, yoga helps, but I go for the visionary experience, like now after class. And the freeway gives that first hot blow dryer blast of the year, and it hits my lizard bones like an old friend. And I see people on all sides of me in cars and buildings, and they are making secret signs with their hands and clicking their tongues in particular ways and trying to conjure up money or security or approval or maybe just love. I wonder if we are not all shamans caught up in our own spells and works, having decided to put ourselves through our particular ordeals, or somewhere along the way we forgot that this was a game, we were just dreaming, and it became so serious that we would decide collectively to become mean. I wonder how to break my own spells just long enough that I can fire the angry gods and replace them with the gods of fire, ignoring the things my vindictive ghosts demand in favor of chasing after the echoes of laughter, regardless of desire or fear, regardless of memory or destiny. Woo! <laughs>